The placement of network services is a big part of security configuration. In this video, we'll talk about internal and external networks. An internal network will contain sensitive IT systems, including things like directory servers, like an active directory domain controller, file servers, database servers, and intranet web servers. Now, encryption should also be used for network traffic internally. Most networks tend to use it externally when transmitting email or connecting to an external website, but we should also consider that many network attacks occur from the inside. So we should use encryption then for both data in motion, data being transmitted over the network, data at rest, so encrypted hard disks and encrypted files, and we might also be required to do this for regulatory compliance. That's definitely the case if you're looking for PCI DSS compliance, if you're a retailer that deals with cardholder information, for example. External networks are public facing, such as a demilitarized zone or a DMZ. A DMZ is either a couple of switch ports, or it could be an entire network segment that is visible to a public facing network like the internet, but also has controlled access to an internal network. Now the DMZ is where you place things like VPN appliances, public HTTP and FTP sites, because they need to be reachable from the internet. However, we should never replicate data from our internal network to external. So for example, if you use Microsoft Active Directory Domain Controllers, you would never replicate from an internal domain controller to one that's in the DMZ. We should also host logs outside of those devices or hosts in the DMZ, because if it's in the DMZ, it's reachable from the internet, and it potentially could be compromised. And a compromised host means that the log files on that host are also compromised. So log forwarding should be configured to an internal secured host. And you can do that on Windows as well as Unix and Linux. Then there's cloud virtual networks where our on-premises network can be extended to a cloud virtual network. It's kind of like having another network on-premises, except you really access it through the internet. This is often done through a site-to-site -site VPN link between your on-premises network and your public cloud provider, or you might even have a dedicated lease line between your site and the cloud provider that doesn't go through the internet. Then there are cellular networks, which are also considered external. We don't control them. Mobile device users, if you think about it, really present an enormous risk for malicious user entry into the enterprise. Because if a smartphone is compromised, then any of the apps and data, now often data won't actually be stored on the smartphone, but there are apps that users use to access sensitive data through the phone. If the phone's compromised, potentially that data could be as well. So it's crucial that we think about smartphones and tablets as computers. They should have a firewall, virus scanner, firmware updates, they should be hardened, and so on. Now, all of those things are really more IT geek things, but at the end of the day, the most important thing is user awareness. People that use smartphones and tablets on work networks need to be aware of not visiting websites they shouldn't be looking at or making sure things are kept up to date and not opening emails they weren't expecting because it might be a phishing attack and so on. DLP stands for Data Loss Prevention. This gives us central control of how apps and data can be used. You have to have a tool that does this. And it's often used with mobile device management or MDM centralized tools to manage mobile devices. So for example, what this means is we might have file attachments in a company email app that can be accessed within the email or stored on corporate file servers, but can't be stored in a personal cloud storage account. We're preventing that sensitive data loss. All internal and external devices need to be patched. They need to have anti-malware running and up to date. They need to have a personal firewall app configured appropriately for your network and what should be allowed into the device and out of the device. And we should also be encrypting both data in motion and data at rest. When we think about demilitarized zones or DMZs and host placements, Anything that needs to be publicly accessible to the internet. So if you're using a VPN solution, for example, so that traveling users and your home users that work from home can get into the company network, then they need to be able to connect over the internet to at least the VPN public interface. So normally the VPN appliance would be in the DMZ or it might appear that way, you might actually be using a reverse proxy that users connect to, which in turn actually sends that 
connection to the VPN to an internal device elsewhere. There are many ways to configure it. But generally speaking, we don't put sensitive information in the DMZ. We put public facing services that require internet access there. Now, many home wireless routers, like the one I'm looking at here, my ASUS wireless router, will allow you to set up DMZ configurations. The same idea is available, of course, at the corporate level using enterprise equipment. So here in my ASUS wireless router config tool, over on the left, I'm going to click on WAN for wide area network, since, as we know, the DMZ really is public facing. Now, what I want to do here is click on the DMZ tab up at the top, and down below, the DMZ has not been enabled. So I can choose the Yes radio button, where I can put in the IP address of a station or a device or a server that I want reachable from the outside. Now, in a true enterprise environment, you'll have many more configuration options than this, but it's available even with standard consumer wireless products. In this video, we talked about internal and external networks.